we went through the event and now the event of all the rain. So the questions we're getting asked most of all at the, at the nursery, and I know you are online too, is how do we deal with all these post rain issues of insects and fungus that we're seeing pop up now through the garden that we're getting uh, getting in the, to this warmer weather. Right, and you know, we can have these issues anytime, but they are exacerbated by how much rain we've had. So we really kind of need to step in and do something before it gets out of control in the garden. Well, you know, my, my stock answer always is, you got to start with healthy soil yes, you do. and healthy plants. That is your best defense against anything. Uh, and then diversify your planting. Right. You know, you're basically, we look at our gardens as something ornamental right. and pleasurable, which is fine. But we also need to look at them from the standpoint of we're trying to establish an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And you can have both. They're not exclusive. Sure. So you can have both of those. And once you establish an ecosystem, the key there is to learn to manage things, not mm -hmm. to necessarily try to eradicate everything. It's to not let anything get to the point that it is destructive to the beauty of your garden, but not necessarily to just, you know, hit it with the, the really heavy toxic well, things and to you begin know, with. I, and to your point, like butterfly weed, Asclepius, it's always covered in aphids. It's right. okay that it's covered in aphids. Right. And I always look at it as a trap crop. The aphids will prefer that over anything else in your garden. They really do. And, you know, the thing about it is that if you really look at your milkweed over time, you'll see that very seldom do you ever notice a really decline in the plant right. over aphids. And, of course, you should step in if you do see something like that. But it tolerates it pretty well. So if it does tolerate it, what's, what's why do problem? anything at all? Exactly. So we picked a few products out here that we feel like are really very safe to use. Right. And um, can generally be all that you would really ever need to combat any issue that might come up. At least for the top issues that we see right. for sure. So for instance, you know, especially after rain, slugs and snails crave moisture. Right. And they love that moist organic material. And so they're all over it all the time. And then of course, naturally they're gonna munch on our plants. Sure. And many of the little things that you see, things like eggshells and beer and all of that, if you look at the studies on them, they're really not effective. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna repel a few, maybe, kill a few, maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's really not an effective control. So staying with an organic or a safe product to use. Uh, Slogo Plus is what we recommend. It is OMRI listed. It's very safe in the garden. It's right. not gonna hurt your birds if they pick up a few pellets. And it really is target specific for snails, slugs, the little sow bugs and earwigs, right. the things that are the mo moist chewers. Right, and it's also quite rain safe. Unless we get a big gully washer, just a normal, a normal, I don't know what right. normal is anymore, <laughs> but a normal rainfall, it's just fine. Yeah, it really is. And actually just, you know, you don't have to use even as much as is listed on the package and just regular applications do you a world of good. Well, you know, since I've become, I, you know, my backyard, I had that shady environment. So it, it's been a slug farm forever. Right. But since I've been very dedicated to using pine straw as my mulch, I don't have the issues anymore. You know, that's true. They do like moist material to crawl over. That One of the advantages of pine straw is that it stays loose and airy yep. and drier. Yep. So that would be a really good yep. way to mitigate them in the first place. And now we have to worry about the ever-present mosquitoes. We do. And you know, there are a gazillion mosquito protocols right. out there. But in all honesty, this is the Gulf Coast and we're never going to find a pesticide that eradicates all the mosquitoes. And we really don't want to in no. the first place. People forget that mosquitoes are the beginning of the estuary food chain, mm -hmm. our, our, our sea life. So we want to concentrate more on making the areas of our garden, our social areas comfortable, and to use personal protection to keep them off of us. So the mosquito barrier is garlic based. It has a really nice residual, I think more than people would expect. Right. Um, there's a faint garlic scent that dissipates very quickly and it really is a good control, especially around things like patios and pools. Sure. Um, then we have the mosquito uh, repellent incense that we can use in where we're actually participating in the garden. I don't go outside without those. <laughs> it's really good. I mean, even working in the beds, they're, they're effective 20 feet away. I'll just stick them around in the soil 
and it's, it's amazing. Isn't that great? So directly when you want to be out in the garden, right. you can use them. And then, that you know, stuff's magic. this is DEET free and that's so important. So many people don't have good reactions to DEET and we right. really do worry about it on our children. And so this is kid safe and this mm -hmm. has a very nice herbal scent to right. it. This no bite me is so comfortable. It, you don't have to slather it all over your skin. I just simply make dots and then rub the dots quickly and it disperses over my skin. And then for people that do have a allergic reaction to the bites, yeah. this is a really good after bite salve as well. Right. It, it, and it, it does work remarkably well and quick. Yep. Yeah. Then next, we have caterpillar issues. Yes. <laughs> and so that we need to worry about things that are specific to dealing with them, not necessarily something broad spectrum. You know, the easiest thing to do if you see a hornworm on a tomato is to just pick it off and squish it. Yes. That's the fastest <laughs> and easiest thing to do. But when you or have- feed it to the chickens. Huh? Or feed, feed it to it, the chickens. Yeah, that, they will dearly appreciate <laughs> it being fed to the chickens. But um, if you have an issue that gets away with you, you know, we visited earlier about some leaf roller issues in our cannas, uh, then BT is specific to them. Again, it's a very mm -hmm. gentle, it's target specific right. to caterpillars, and it can be used as a spray or as a powder. One of the easiest ways to deal with cannas is to actually put the powder in an old sock yeah. and tie it and then use that sort of as a powder bag. Like you, powder can, you can just tap it and it I will like fall that. down into the leaves. So also we have here Organicide. This is one of my favorite products because it's so, uh, it, the uses are so many. Right. It's, it's an insecticide, it's a miticide, and a fungicide. Right. It's sesame oil based. Yes. So it's not temperature sensitive. Right. It's got fish emulsion in it. Uh, but most of all, like I said, it's bee friendly. Right. So I love it for almost anything that falls into those categories. Yes, and we do want to make sure that we repel certain insects, but that we do protect our important pollinators. Exactly. And then you were talking about earlier the seaweed extract. Liquid seaweed is interesting. You know, sometimes in the organic world, we don't have necessarily tons of commercial research to support what we do. Right. In this case, we're seeing that now. Liquid seaweed, uh, not seaweed extracts, um, they, they are an antifeedant for spider mites. And spider mites are a very persistent pest. Mm -hmm. Once you have them, they're really difficult to get rid of. Mm -hmm. But uh, foliar feeding with the liquid seaweed will discourage their feeding. And after a few treatments, they just kind of drift off. And you know, EM1, we really, really love this. This is actually a living product. Yes. And it's made here in Texas. Right. And we talk about it often because of its multiple uses in the garden. It, it's, it's incredible. So it's a good, we call it a probiotic for right. the garden. It can be used as a soil drench or can be used in your foliars. It can be in used your rain in, barrels. Right. It can be used in combination with your other foliars so you don't have to spray two things. Right. And it actually is biologically active and will populate the leaf surface and work for an extended period of time. And... The fungus is among us right yes, now. Yes, it is. <laughs> when you have heavy rain and yes. heat, you have fungus. Yes. And so copper fungicide is a great... We touched on it with the video on the figs. Right. We had a customer just the other day that has leaf spot already starting on her fig. Uh, it does not have fruit at this right. time. So it's safe So we were to able use. to let her use the copper fungicide. Mm -hmm. And then armory. We're really excited that this is back on the market. Again, we're talking about things that are biological. Right. So we're not talking about heavy synthetic chemical pesticides. We're using nature to combat nature. Mm -hmm. We're just bringing it into our gardens. We're right. relocating it to our benefit. Yes, yes. So this is a great example of what to do or what we can do and, right. and still be safe. But again, it always starts with the foundation. It does. Good soil, good food, and diversification of planting. Absolutely, Beverly. Thanks, Angela.